Welcome to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy. My guest today is a two-time NBA champion and will forever live in Lakers lore because of his incredible dancing. <laughs> He's also <laughs> the new head basketball coach at Utah Valley, the Mad Dog, Mark Madsen. It's good to see you. Christine, thanks for having me on. Great to be here. Let's talk about that dancing. 2001 championship parade. Shaq starts rapping. You start dancing like no one's watching, except for <laughs> there's a lot of people watching. Um, were those like your just natural moves there? <laughs> well, the whole team was dancing, but, but, but I guess... You stood out. I stood out. You did. So I, I got engaged a few years ago, and I, I told my now wife, I, I told her, I said, there was some footage I had to hide from you for a while until yeah. after we sealed the deal. Yeah. So, so now my wife's seen it post dance, but uh, I'll be dancing again when we win the WAC championship. Okay. Did, at your wedding, were you dancing like that? A little bit, yes. Oh, so she knew. She's like, okay, <laughs> this is what I'm signing up for. But you're you're in LA. Did anyone offer to like give you dance lessons? Maybe the Lakers cheerleaders. <laughs> I told Shaq. I said, Shaq, everyone says your dancing was good. You don't have great rhythm either. That's why I told Shaq. Shaq? Yeah. I think Shaq can dance. I, need, I must have needed lessons from Shaq. Did then. you go to weddings like of your teammates and you had to bust out those same moves? Swing dancing was my thing. Oh, swing dancing. Swing dancing. I'm willing to bet that at your teammates' weddings, there wasn't a lot of swing dancing. <laughs> that was probably a little bit different. Um, so you get drafted by the Lakers and you're playing with all these veterans and your all-stars. Was there someone who took you under their wing right away? I think it was, for me, it was Shaq, actually. Shaq. Yeah, Shaq took me under his wing. I, uh, he came into the locker room one day and he said, who in the world is driving that Toyota Astro van? <laughs> and, and I raised my head and said, Shaq, it's me. He said, you are not rolling into the Staples Center driving that beat up Toyota minivan. Okay. So he took me car shopping. He offered to buy you a car? He offered to put a down payment on the car. What was the down payment? That could be like a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 5,000. I, I said, Shaq, oh. I'm get, yeah, I'm getting paid now. But he did give me a great deal. And then he took me uh, Wait, 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 wait. So you and Shaq roll up to the car dealership? Yeah. And he's like, I, I'm going to put a $5,000 down payment on this car. We get to the car dealership. He, he walks up to the fir first guy and he says, take me straight to the manager. We okay. Get, yeah, we get in there and he says, Mr. Manager, this is Mad Dog. I'm going to buy him a car today. <laughs> of course. That's a very Shaq thing to do. So what'd you get? Uh, it was a blue Chevy Tahoe. A Chevy Tahoe. Yeah. Not so flashy. Not so flashy, you know, but it got the, it was great. It was a great car. And, and Shaq uh, approved. Shaq approved. Okay. And he paid $5,000. He offered to, I, oh. I, I insisted no, but then after that, he took me to uh, the big and tall store. He shelled out 7000 What? On, on a different pair of jeans for every day of the week. And, okay. Uh, and then so you we, had like a Monday pair, a two, okay. And then he took me Rolex shopping and, and he bought a new Rolex for every single guy on the team. You were like pretty woman. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> Why was he? So he just felt like you needed an image makeover? You know, I, I think he, he saw me as a rookie and somebody who, okay. uh, you know, he, he wanted to help me out as a rookie in the NBA. Okay. And then uh, he wanted to buy a Rolex for everybody on the team because we were coming off a championship year that year. Yeah. And it was a way of him just, just thanking the guys for, for their contributions. He's a generous guy. He's a great guy. Okay. So you're coming out of college and you're going up against Shaq in practice every day. That's yeah. a huge difference yeah. from college kids to Shaq. <laughs> what were those practices like? Well, I'll never forget the first practice because I was on the second team and everyone was matching up and, and no one was taking Shaq. And then all of a sudden, Teron Liu, uh, Devin George, everyone says, you got him. I said, I'm guarding Shaq? Yeah. And so I had to guard Shaq every day in practice. Um, you know, and, and I'm a rookie, so I'm, I'm going as hard as I can. You have to. You have to. And so one day, I come into practice and Shaq pulls me aside and he says, big man, you need to ease up in practice. You, you need to stop sprinting so hard, stop boxing out so hard. Just if you ease up, I'll shoot turnaround jumpers all day. He said, if you go hard, I'm going to dunk on you every single time. <gasps> I, I said, Shaq, I'll ease up a little bit. Okay. But then I couldn't help myself. I got on the court and I had to run hard every time. Oh no. So he dunked on you. Well, he, he went hard. There was, there was one time in practice where it, it got a little bit crazy, and uh, he grabbed me by the shoulders and threw me on the ground. Oh, is and, this before or after he bought you all the clothes? This is after he, he, after. he bought all the stuff, yeah. Okay. And Phil just blew the whistle and said, Shaq, you need to cool off. And uh, the next day, we were good. But, but sometimes things got a little bit crazy out there. But you and Shaq were always good? Always, always I would good. be so mad if he threw me on the ground. Listen, it, it didn't feel great, but I got back up. I, yeah. Oh, wow. So you went from playing at Stanford 
then to playing for the Lakers. There's a lot of celebrities that are sitting courtside, probably a little different than those Stanford games. <laughs> was there anybody who came that you kind of fanned out over? Well, so Tiger and I missed, Tiger Woods and I missed each other at Stanford by one year. Oh, bummer. And, yeah, it was kind of a bummer, but he was sitting courtside one game. Okay. And so uh, the game was going well. I, I think I made a good play or two. And as I was coming to the timeout, I said, this is my one chance to meet Tiger. So I just veered straight to him, gave him a hug, went to the bench. The next day in the locker room, Brian Shaw said, don't think we didn't all see you hug Tiger <laughs> after you dunked. You're allowed to do that, though. I see players all the time having conversations during the game with guys courtside. You got to have fun with it. I yeah. Mean, you got to have fun. It's, it's, uh, you play as hard as you can during the game, and then, you know, it, you're still a human being, and, and you still have friends and relationships. Yeah. So you played for Phil Jackson. Did he have any Philisms or things that he taught you that still stick with you to this day? One thing I remember, Christine, is we were playing in the championship in Philadelphia, and we lost game one. Mm -hmm. And it, it sent shockwaves through the Lakers and through, through the area because we hadn't lost a single game in the playoffs up until that point. And, and, and Shaq, the calls had not gone Shaq's way. And so in the locker room, Phil told the whole team, he said, Shaq, when you go out and address the media, you need to explain to the media that you, as a big man, have a right to pivot. Mm -hmm. you, you have that right. And so Shaq went out there, prepped the media, got his message out there, and then uh, Dikembe Mutombo was guarding him. And, and I'll always remember Shaq just pivoting, got his elbows up, just hitting Dikembe right in the face. Oh. He was allowed to pivot. They didn't call an offensive yeah. foul. And uh, Phil got his message through. Shaq got his message through. And we ended up winning the championship. What about Kobe? Because everyone talks about his intensity in practice. We've even heard it as it started to leak some of the things that he would do during right. practice. Um, do you have any examples of kind of the intensity that you experienced with him? You know, one thing I love about Kobe is Kobe is all about winning. Mm -hmm. Winning at, at every level. And in practice, it was no different. W when I played with Kobe, if, if you missed a pass, you know, he might give you one or, one or two free ones. Like, hey, man, catch the next one. If you miss the third one, he, he was coming at you. Okay. Because he cared yeah. and, and he wanted to push you. He wanted to push the team to be its best. Um, but when I went back to, to coach the second time around, I was coaching Kobe and, and nobody, on the, nobody on the coaching staff wanted to ref because you just don't want to make a call and then have to deal with the back and forth. Mm -hmm. But so, so I would ref and refing Kobe. You had to get the job of ref. I, I had the job of refing oh, Kobe gosh. in practice when I was coaching there. Uh-huh. Tough job, but, but ultimately, the main thing is make a call, stick with it, have conviction. Kobe respects it. Were you there for the toilet paper incident? I was there for that. Oh, tell me everything. Honestly, Christy, I don't remember it that well. Oh, come on. That was a huge day. <laughs> well, it was... Charmin was so happy. <laughs> I remember because it, it, it happened to happen when the media had come in. Yes. And so the media heard it all, but that wasn't too different than a lot of other practices. Kobe always raised the intensity. He was he always- He was calling people soft? I mean, it was different at times, but, but he pushed guys hard and, and guys had to either fight back and, and do your best or, or basically sub out. And wow. so playing with Kobe, it, 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 I loved it. It prepares you for the NBA. It prepares you for life. What about Shaq showing up to practice naked? Were you there for that? I remember that. Okay, why? Like, tell, <laughs> tell me what happened. I'm out there shooting free throws. I'm out there shooting free throws and the training room door opens mm -hmm. of the old practice facility and... Shaq just walks out. It was, it was all men in the gym. He just kind of puts his hands up like this. Hey, fellas, how's it going? <laughs> Said hello, walked around like, like there was no issue, and walked back in. Check out our YouTube channel, Fair Game, on FS1 to catch all the best highlights of our show. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode.